So as planned, we're taking off the front end of the car here, and I guess we're gonna do some documentation along the way, just so that we have it, and I figured I'd share some with uh, whoever wants to watch. Looking through the headlight holes, there's a maybe a better look of the driver's side circle drawn on that uh, inside of the fender. And if you look down in here, you'll see the remains of the driver's side ram air scoop bracket, uh, ram air outside air induction scoop bracket none of this has been apart before it doesn't appear but over here is pretty interesting just to see how all these rubber flaps were originally installed uh, this is the rubber flap from the radiator support around the bumper bracket on the inside of the bumper bracket and here we are have the rubber flap around the parking light that's in the front bumper and here's a better look, maybe. I'm gonna really try to get down in here. Can you, yeah, there you go. There's a top of the air induction scoop and the brackets, and you can see it gets pretty busy in there. There's the brackets, there's the bumper brackets, and if I shine down in there, you guys can maybe look and see where this strut bracket, there we go, maybe, goes down to the fender there, right there. It was down to the fender and is mounted directly to the fender. There is no rubber insulator between that bracket and the fender, as we've discussed before, kind of in that DNA video. Uh, there's the there's the air induction scoop poking out. Kind of a view you don't normally see, right? A W car with the uh, plastics off the front. You can kind of see how it all goes together. There's a shot of the dry, uh, passenger side, rather, circle you know, drawn inside the fender. Those are some things that I, those are two things I have not seen on another one. But pretty cool to see, because once I take it apart, you know, it's only original once. Once I take this all apart, that's it. We don't, we don't have that anymore. Uh, what I am gonna do is just kind of record how the wiring harness goes through here, which is all just, you know, non-W specific, really. But, you know, cool clips that hold on the inside of the radiator support, the forward light harness, horn wiring, clips inside. Also, with those clips, there's a clip over here. That white clip that holds the forward light harness that comes through from the front and into there. Okay, so this will all be, uh, you know, they're basically just these loop almost like zip ties, right? All right, kind of a live shot here of the mess I've made. Today, I got a lot of stuff done. And I'm not quite done, but you can see what a, what a mess I got working with here. But let me just show you guys a couple cool things, right? Um, there's, the, there's the fenders are off, and you know, you guys know that there's the marks on the inside. The, the one outside air induction scoop we have. And you know, the wheel wells with the holes. So that's all kind of kind of known about the radiator support here. We do have the one bracket, like it was easier to leave on there. Um, that goes to the fender. See, there's no rubber insulator there, and there's no rubber insulator on the fender. And then over here is the bracket for the outside air induction scoop driver side that we are missing. But check out the rot in that radiator support. I got my work cut out for me there. Uh, that's going to be kind of fun to do. Here's the front bumper, you know, with some of the parking, the parking permit stuff from, you know, when he was, Mr. Jones was stationed. I think this is all from the Great Lakes. I mean, you could even make out like a 50308. I don't, I don't think this 12 of 9 something is, t is December of 90 something. This car was off the road uh, in the 80s. So I'm not quite sure what that means, if that's like a parking spot or something. Okay, but here's the, here's the frame. Yeah, nasty, 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 and my floor is nasty, and there's tools all over the place, but somebody had posted, obviously there's no secret, right? We have lots of upper cowl rot underneath the windshields. So here's the bottom of the cowl. I wiped it down just real quick so we could see very pleasantly surprised that's surface rust here that's that's there's no rot there that's really really good 
Um, the convertible had uh, a fair amount of rot in there that had to be patched. Uh, this screw is interesting to me. I'm thinking this screw has to do with this option, which is a forced vent system. I don't remember the RPO, but I'll get that. I'll, I'll get that for you guys. That's what these two studs and nuts are. I guess there's another set of blower motors in here, an option only in 1969. I guess it was, it proved to be a relatively problematic option. As we know, a W31 could not be had with air conditioning. So this gentleman checked the box for a forced air system. So there's little blower motors there. There must be a wire, and this would be a wire loom. And you can see this screw here is kind of snapped off. Um, almost ripped my hand open on that. So these are, these are screws that I'm not familiar with seeing. So I'm assuming they go with that option that's up there. There is a little bit of rot right here, poor lighting. Um, that I'll clean up, that's easy to do. Right here, the convertible was heavily rotted because there was a big mouse nest in there. So this is a very pleasant surprise that this cowl's in that good a shape. Very pleasant. And there's of course the boot for the wiring for the power window motors. Very cool. And every reason to believe, I have every reason to believe that this front clip has never been off this car. This looks really OE authentic. 50 something year old funk and dirt and grease and grime. You know, nothing that's been ever spray bombed or, you know, restored in the 80s or anything like that this is as this is as original as it gets right okay a little bit of rot here which is really pretty common not a big deal this side's really nice so okay all these parts are going to go in the tool trailer outside for now okay we just got to have a place to put stuff so we're not tripping over things and then we can um yeah there's the there's the rot on the bottom of the fenders guys driver's side fender Passenger side significantly worse, but you know, we can patch that with the proper patches. So tomorrow, after I clean things up tomorrow, I will be taking the trunk off, the doors off. We'll put the hood out there with all the, all the other parts. And basically the big parts are out of here. And I can start with stripping the firewall, getting the wiring harness out through the car, out of the trunk, vacuum line to the trunk release, that kind of stuff will come out. And then, we start hoisting it to the trusses here so we can get to work on the floor system of the car and or the frame. Still got to decide how I'm going to shore up the rockers on the car. You know, there is there is some supports, uh, you know, missing here. <laughs> and that cross member right is for the transmission, guys. So this is the what's left of the rear section of the floor. There is a cross member right here. And then the outer rockers are tied into that. But up by the firewall and the uh, um, front body mounts, I think I might weld in a bracket to go from bottom of kick panel to bottom of kick panel. And uh, this way we don't have this thing laying out on us. And then we'll just get up in the air and we can decide you know, where we proceed from there. So I'm boxing all kinds of parts up, making my making my labels you know labeled bags because some of the stuff we're not going to see for some time all right uh i thank everybody for keeping up keeping up to date on this i'm not real good at the um what do you call it the, the time lapse the stuff i tried it and the phone kept tipping over and it was getting me frustrated so we're just gonna keep doing it this way until i decide if i want to get some better equipment i think maybe you guys have seen fenders and Radiator supports and stuff come off. You don't need to watch me do that, right? There's no, no magic there. Cool. It might be fun to get somebody to help me videotape so we get this thing hanging in the in the ceiling and you guys get to see that come up. I think that a lot of people like to see that. Um, anybody who's done it knows that it's all the prep work, right? Picking the body up is, is minutes. It's kind of like, like John and I say, it's kind of like moving a couch. You just kind of pick it up from here and put it over there.
side. Right now, let's go to the trunk. You can, can you reach over here. You got one bolt here. One on the outside. All right, where well, I've been busy, I've been thrashing here. This car is stripped, man. The body's not even bolted to the frame anymore. So last time you guys saw it, the front clip was off it. But now the shell is, other than the dashboard, the shell is empty. And I figured I'd just do the dashboard now there's no floors and I can stand up when I get it hoisted up. So this car's got nothing left at all. Back here is completely empty. I'm just gonna show you guys a couple, maybe I'm walking too fast, just a couple things. A lot of wiring in this car. You know, this car had power windows, right? You got power windows, that's RPO 831. That's what this wiring harness is here, here is all about. See this grommet right here that's painted? That grommet is where the antenna wire would go if the antenna was going to be in the uh, fender. But the fact that the grommet's in there and is painted, that means that when they built the body at Fisher, they knew that RPO U75, U75 is the rear power antenna. So there's the factory hole there and the wire came all the way up through here and the antenna bolts to the floor there. Um, the vacuum line to the, to the uh, power trunk release goes along in that, in that same route, comes up through the floor here, and lays in this trough. There's a metal, kind of a guard that holds the vacuum line and the uh, antenna cable, and of course the power leads for the power antenna. And, you know, here's another cool thing I'm going to show you guys. Um, See in here? Oh, that, that, that vacuum trunk, by the way, that's A91. RPO A91 is for the trunk release. Remember I talked to you guys about this these bolts? Now that with the heater box off, you can see there's actually another blower motor in there. And that is RPO C57. And that's for forced air ventilation. So there's another set of wiring, there's another studs over there on that side uh, I mean rear view mirror is still there because the screws are screws are rotted uh, back here if this car or any car had N66 okay let me just show you something else here wood grain dash there's got the map lights underneath the dash and the map lights under the rear view mirror so one way to tell if your car was equipped with factory wheel rally wheels if you had N66 Super stock twos or PO5 super stock ones. The lug wrench was mounted up in this part of the trunk. Give you guys some perspective, right? There's the trunk. And there would have been another bracket right here. And that's where the lug wrench would go if you have one of those rally wheel options. Otherwise, the lug wrench got stowed with the jack. Yeah. <laughs> I might have said I'm not scared, but oh boy. Man, oh man, you know, this car obviously has a history that we're trying to piece together and it may have included a lot of Oceanside sitting. And this is just a lot of rust from the top. But this thing is not bolted down anymore. It's ready to come off. What I'm going to be doing next 
is I'm gonna be installing braces from the bottom of the A pillar. We're gonna go here to the B pillar. Then I'm gonna go from B pillar to B pillar there. Just to shore this thing up a little bit, probably do some laterals from rocker to rocker. Just to keep things, you know, kind of sort of square. It definitely took a hit, obviously, when the tree fell on it and caved it in a bit. But I can't rely on any of this being structurally sound. I'm not going to take that chance. I don't have much to work with here. I'm also going to put a brace from a uh, trunk hinge box left to right just to keep those equidistant and try to keep those things plumb. You know, as best I can. Do what I can do. And we're not going to... We're not gonna hang it from the air and do pull-ups on it. We're just gonna hang it, get it off the frame, roll the frame out, and uh, you know, separate the two indefinitely while I can work on the work on the body. I actually think what we're gonna do is push this whole thing outside, and I'm gonna wash it really, really well on Saturday. I think that's the plan. Do some welding on it this week as far as getting the braces in. Get it on the ground, get it outside, wash this thing. If there's any salt, if there's any nasty stuff still stuck on it, let's get it off. This way I know that I'm starting off with at least clean rust, right? Everything is better clean. And then we can just chip away at it. We're probably going to put the frame for this car out on one of the other car trailers, tarp that up, probably for the winter. The body shell will sit in here. And then right in this spot right here, John's going to be bringing over the frame for his 71 El Camino SS project. One of the El Caminos that I pulled out of the woods last year. Uh, there was actually three El Caminos that I bought. One was actually turned out to be John's. So that's going to come here and we're going to weld up the frame. That's coming next. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.